Let's go to the briefing that's happening right now. Uh, uh, alert. Uh, we have lifted the stand down where we've asked people to secure in place, and we have relieved the campus community to uh, go about their normal and regular activities. Um, you're going to hear about that in just a second. First of all, just a, a bit of process. I'm going to have uh, statements here, um, and then we'll do Q&A for basically as long as you all need for Q&A. It will be a wireless microphone going around the room. I understand this is being broadcast live. I suspect that all of you are doing this live. And so that, uh, so that everybody can hear the questions, uh, I, I would ask that you uh, grab that wireless uh, wherever it be. Um, otherwise, I'll end up having to repeat each of the questions. First of all, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Charles Steger, who will deliver a short uh, statement, and then we will turn it over to Dr. Jean Dysinger. Um, Dr. Dysinger is the Deputy Chief of the Virginia Tech Police Department. We also have with us um, Sergeant Bob Carpentieri, who is a public information officer with the Virginia State Police. The Virginia State Police has had a lead on the investigation <coughs> since uh, early into uh, this event today. Um, we're going to tell you as much as we can and as much as we know uh, at this point, and we're not going to be able to answer all your questions, please understand. Um, but then after that, we will go ahead and go through a Q&A. So at this point, uh, Dr. Steger. Thank you very much. Well, as you all know, today, uh, tragedy again struck Virginia Tech in a wanton act of violence where a police officer was murdered during a routine traffic stop. And in light of the turmoil and the trauma and the tragedy suffered by this campus uh, by guns, I can only say that words uh, don't describe our feelings and they're most elusive at this point in time. Our hearts are broken again for the family of our police officer and we extend our deepest sympathy and condolences. Police officers on this campus and in every police force in the nation routinely put themselves at risk for their safety and we are deeply grateful for their service. I'm going to ask Deputy Chief of Police Dr. Gene Dessinger to tell you briefly what we know and then Sergeant Bob Carpentieri uh, who is the public information officer for the state police will describe further uh, what is happening at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you Dr. Steger. Earlier today, the Virginia Tech community lost one of its guardians. At approximately 12.15 this afternoon, a Virginia Tech police officer conducted a traffic stop on an individual in the Coliseum parking lot near McComas Hall. During that traffic stop, our communications interacted with the officer, checking on his welfare, which he confirmed was positive. Shortly thereafter that, dispatch was unable to make contact with the officer shortly before 12.30 p.m. Virginia Tech Police received its first call advising that they had witnessed a subject approach the officer and fire a weapon at the officer and then leave the scene. Virginia Tech Police responded to the scene where they found the officer who had suffered a gunshot. We requested immediate assistance of local law enforcement agencies. Local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies responded immediately to the campus to assist in locating and taking, locating the gunmen and taking them into custody. At approximately 1 p.m., an officer observed a suspicious subject in the eye lot off of Duck Pond Road. And I'm returning to that area to make contact with the subject. Found them deceased of a gunshot wound. <clears throat> All of the responding agencies have continued to search throughout the campus area for any ongoing threat. Since the time of the second incident, there have been no other founded reports of any threat to the campus. We have responded to and investigated numerous calls of suspicious activity, community members reporting persons that matched the description that was provided to the community of the reported gunman, and none of those resulted in credible findings. 
So I repeat, following the second incident, there were no further, re uh, no further founded sightings or concerns reported to the Virginia Tech Police. Earlier this afternoon, um, I requested the, the Virginia Tech, the assistance of the Virginia State Police and requested that they assume the primary role in the investigation of the deaths. And with that, I'll turn it over to Sar Sergeant Carpentieri from the State Police. Thanks. This afternoon, approximately 12, 16 p.m., the Virginia State Police responded to the Virginia Tech campus in reference to a uh, shooting involving a Virginia Tech police officer while he was conducting a traffic stop. As a result, uh, the four-year veteran of the Virginia Tech police officer was uh, shot and killed. Uh, we're not identifying the member at this time, but he was uh, assigned to the patrol division. Um, the individual involved in this uh, shooting incident fled the crime scene in the direction of a second crime scene that was located uh, near the eye lot, which is near the duck pond. And it turns out another body of a white male was located in that vicinity, uh, also shot. Um, a weapon has been recovered. I'm not going to discuss what type of caliber that weapon is at this time. Uh, this is currently under investigation still. Um, the Bureau of Criminal Investigation of the State Police, based out of Salem, has a crime scene investigators at two of these uh, crime scenes at this time, presently processing the uh, scenes. Um, and I know you'll have some questions, but uh, we're going to be limited as, the, as to what we can say right at this time because we do not want to jeopardize this case. But just to make it clear, we want everyone to know that, like Gene said, no additional victims or shooting uh, reports uh, have been given to the police department. So uh, we feel confident that the situation is under control at this time. Um, I know I've gotten some media calls from you regarding the northbound Radford rest area. Uh, we had some reports of some suspicious activity at that location. We sent some troopers and agents up to that location and they're currently processing that scene. I cannot tell you at this time if it's related to this incident or not. So I just want to clear the air about that, that we do have people at the Radford I-81 northbound <laughs> rest area. So if anybody has any questions, we'll go ahead and uh, start with that. But, but before we open oh, I'm sorry, it up, Larry. Before we open up to questions, is, it, is the mic live? Before we open up to questions, I, I, I would just like to say and thank um, all the uh, responding police agencies. Uh, I think it's fair to say the campus was flooded with support from um, the Blacksburg Police Department, I've heard the, Pul the Pulaski uh, Sheriff was here, the Montgomery County Sheriff, the Christiansburg, Salem, and obviously the Virginia State Police. And we very much appreciate their protection. And I also want to thank our university community, and particularly our student body, for uh, uh, staying indoors when we asked them to stay indoors and stay secure uh, when we sent the VT alerts out throughout the day. That's the way it's supposed to work, and we thank you. I want to be clear on the person, the second person that you found dead. Do you believe that to be the shooter? Can't comment on that right now. It's still being investigated. Do you have an identity on that person? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to the investigators at this point. Sergeant Carpentieri, uh, if, if we're not, identif we're not yes, identifying Dave. that uh, that person and we're calling it a safe situation now, is is it safe here or is it safe everywhere? Are we still conducting a search? What's, what's well, going on Well, let's just say sense? I can't say for the whole community. I would just comment about the campus. You know, we have a large police presence here, so uh, they just released the uh, faculty and students uh, to go about the rest of their day. So um, I'm just going to speak about what's going on here on campus. You know, we have other police agencies, Blacksburg, Radford, Christiansburg, Montgomery County Sheriff's, they're all in the area assisting. So due to the large amount of police presence, I, I feel like uh, we're in good hands and it's safe. Not that I'm aware of. 
You talked about um, the interaction that this person that was found dead at the second scene had with the officer. Can you speak more about that or, or what he was uh, stopped for? I don't know of any uh, conversation that took place. I just know there's a second crime scene. There was a body located at that the duck pond area in the eye lot. I, I can comment that witnesses at the scene of uh, the first shooting reported that the gunman had uh, fled along Washington Street toward the location of I lot and an officer in that area observed a person and chose to, to make contact with them and then by the time they turned around and, and located the subject, that subject was deceased. Um, Dr. Deisinger, can we give another description for the I-Lot? There's, there's several names for the I-Lot. Also referred to as the Cage, Long Duck Pond Drive, it's uh, near the end of Washington Street. <clears throat> I got a question. Did, so at the, uh, can, can, we, can we wait till the uh, mic gets up, Jeff? Um, was the fact that the initial description of the uh, suspect being, like, being that it was so, you know, so common, was it a problem to try to find a suspect with a lot of false reports of seeing him? Well, we got numerous phone calls, Tech PD, Blacksburg, you know, when, whenever we have an incident like this take place, um, you know, you're going to get a lot, large number of sightings from people. So we were running around to different locations, uh, not only here on campus, but also in the town of Blacksburg. So you have to treat, you know, everything serious at that time. Um, and that's what we did. I, I had two things I wanted to ask. One was the the suspect that was seen firing at the officer, was that the same person that was involved in the traffic stop or was this unrelated? No, it, it wasn't. The uh, tech officer had another violator stopped in a vehicle when this person came up to his patrol vehicle, apparently. And you said you wouldn't talk about the caliber of the weapon or anything, but I mean, I can't, I can't tell you. Can you tell me what sort of weapon it was? Was it a handgun or a long gun? Or I'm not going to disclose that information right now. Okay. Jeff. He's got the mic coming. I'm going to go slow because this is a little complicated. I'm used to you, Jeff. But anyway. So at the Coliseum parking lot, a Virginia Tech police officer stopped a motorist. Correct. And was shot by some other party. By a third party. During that traffic stop. Correct. Which we don't believe that person was in the vehicle that he stopped. Where did he come from? walked up into the parking lot. How many witnesses saw this event? I, I don't know the number. There's numerous people that are being interviewed right now. Were any students involved? I can't. I really couldn't tell you that right now. You know, we're still in the early stages of the investigation, even though this took place at noontime. There's a lot of people to be interviewed. You know, we we're, if you came through campus, you'd see uh, that we have the crime scenes are still up and we're still out there so there's a lot that takes place behind the scenes that you really don't know about and it takes several hours to to really you know and the, the investigators have to compare notes as well okay Just, and then over at the i lot or the cage um, a police officer saw a, a suspect or a suspicious person was that a virginia tech police officer uh no it was not what agency was that? Uh, I don't know specifically. Okay. But could, could you describe again what happened there? Because it's, you, you described it as a crime scene and a person, a person ended up dead. Um, what well, was the crime? roughly a quarter of a mile from the first crime scene, which was over at Castle in the parking lot, the person that was involved in the shooting fled towards the second crime scene in that direction. So when the officers responded, they located another body at the duck pond uh, parking lot. At the I lot. Yeah, lot. Did the officers see that person alive? Yes, they did. Okay. They did? They did. And then shortly later, deceased? Correct. Did the officers shoot that individual? They did not. Is that where a gun was found or a weapon was recovered? Of yours? Um, I can't really comment on that. There was a weapon recovered, but I'm not going to disclose the location right now. Two quick questions. Major, can you tell me how many, I'm sorry, 
Dave, how you got to stand up. Come on. Yeah, I don't want to block the cameras. There you uh, go. Can you tell me how many members are in the Virginia Tech Police Force support the whole nine yards? We have uh, 53 sworn police officers as uh, part of the DART department, uh, approximately 20 full-time and part-time security guards, uh, nine communicate, professional communication <coughs> staff, and uh, several administrative support staff. So r roughly 80? Yes, sir. Okay. And can you tell me, Bob, if, uh, if the officer was shot while he was sitting in his patrol car? I really don't know that, Dave. Uh, it's still under investigation. Um, I don't have all the details of that. Once we get some additional information, it'll be passed along. But like I said, you know, it's still early in the investigation, and um, I, I really don't know the answer to that. Let me let me, let me just mention one thing. I, I, I hope you'll understand why we're here. I mean, you know, in this day and age of instantaneous communications, we know that everybody wants to know what's going on. Um, all of you all have pinged <clears throat> me and my staff throughout the day trying to figure out what's going on. We're all trying to figure out what's going on, and so we're doing the best we can to piece it together and to give you what we know as soon as we possibly know it. So there still are uh, unknowns yet or things that uh, our investigators are not, are not able to say. But I, but I hope you'll understand that we're here in the spirit of disclosing as quickly as we possibly can so that you can then go do what you need to do, and that is to tell uh, your readers and your, and your viewers. So th some of the things are just not going to be able to address. Okay, now where's the next question? Can you just talk a little bit about students and how their day changed today and how it's going to change going forward? Yeah, please, thank you. Um, today actually was reading day. The last day of classes was yesterday. Exams were scheduled to begin tomorrow. Uh, they have been postponed. Um, our academic uh, uh, leadership is currently in the process of trying to, uh, uh, to arrange a new exam schedule. We hope to have something as possibly as early as tonight, which we'll uh, issue to the university community uh, through um, uh, email and also post on the website and Facebook, etc. If we don't, by tomorrow, uh, we would have the new exam schedule determined. And the yep. officer that was killed, is this the first time a tech officer has been killed in the line of duty? I might have to refer that. Um, I believe it is. Is there anybody in custody? No. Do you guys believe this officer was specifically targeted? Uh, was he targeted because he was an officer, or do you think it was completely random? Do you have any idea at this point? Um, I would just say that that's still under investigation. It's not fair for us to even speculate uh, in regards to that. And one more question for the university. Um, can you talk a little bit about your response today and getting all this information out to the tech community? and how it's different maybe from uh, 2007? Charles, why don't you take it first okay. and then Gene. Okay. Well, I would say one of the key changes is that the communication systems that we have at our disposal today did not exist on April 16, 2007. But our command control structure worked extremely well. All of the technology worked perfectly well. And the individuals responsible for the additional functional areas have done a splendid job. So. I was very pleased with the results that occurred today in terms of notification to the community. Um, let, why don't I, but, but before we do that, um, we're, we're going to do our best to try to pull the timeline together. Most of you have gotten the BT alerts, and you know, know, know what time those went out. Um, it, it is important to, to point out that, um, as Dr. Dysinger said, um, the call came in to them, as Gene said, somewhere in the neighborhood of 1230? 1215. About 1215. The, the call or the stop? The call, the, the call just before uh, 1230. Just before 1230. And at 1236, our police dispatch issued the shots fired a notification through the VT alert system. Um, and so we continued to use the VT alerts. And I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six times, including the stand down notification. Six times we notified our community through the alerts, um, which, of course, as you know, is a multifaceted, multi communication channel system. Um, and, and so I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Um, is there a vehicle associated with the suspect? Not at the two crime scenes that we're... You're watching our special now. coverage, breaking news from the Virginia Tech campus. Two people killed just after noon. This is a special edition of Wavy News 10 at 5. You're listening to a news conference right now recapping the day's events. Let's listen. While you're squelching rumors, there was uh, somebody mentioned that 
the suspect's description fit roughly the description of someone who committed an armed robbery in Radford last night? Do you have any idea or any reason to think there was a connection? That's still a possibility. It's under investigation, yes. President Steger, as the leader of the university, could you elaborate on your thoughts um, having to endure a, a situation like this again so soon after April Well, I think it, at one level the, uh, the loss of any human life is a tremendous tragedy that is felt by everyone in the entire community, not just the university, but the, the town and all of the residents and the students. And we are putting in place, as we speak, uh, counseling support for our students and faculty and families because it is very traumatic. And this brings back some difficult memories of the past. Uh, in terms of the uh, response of the university community, it, it, everyone, it worked, uh, all the systems and the things that we had planned to do worked extremely well. Because uh, sometimes technology doesn't cooperate with you, but today, it functioned extremely well, and I think I will join with uh, Larry Hinker in saying I appreciate the cooperation of the students and faculty uh, to follow our instructions where they could and to enable our law enforcement people to carry out the type of research and investigation that's very important to help us clear and make a decision of whether or not the campus is safe. So. But by the way, just real quick, I, I, I didn't do my duty. Um, we know some of you. We don't know all of you. Um, and even if you think we know you, like <laughs> Jeff, uh, say who you are. Tim. Tim Thornton. I'm with uh, WBTF. And I, I wondered, sort of along that same line, how, how are the officers doing? I mean, that's somebody in the family. How are they? As you can imagine, this is a very difficult time, uh, not only for the members of our department, but for our brother and sisters officers from across the region that responded to support and assist us. Um, this is a, a traffic law, a, a huge loss of an individual who's committed a great deal uh, of themselves to the service to this community. And uh, all of us feel that on a very deep and personal level. Thanks, Tim. We're going to stay here until you got all your questions answered. Um, we're not going to do one-on-ones. Okay, so everything is going to be from here, from, from the table. So let's just keep going. Oh, I've got one question. If the, and, um, and tell them who you are, Bob. Uh, Bob Sharp with uh, Star News. Um, okay. Since you don't have anybody in suspect, you let off the alerts. You consider this case, other than figuring out the details, is basically closed? I wouldn't say closed, no. In terms of harm to the public, is someone that we should I'd be looking say at? when the university lifted the alert they they consulted with several people and they felt like uh, it was safe to have the students and faculty go about the rest of their day so you can I don't like to say assume but we like to think that you know things are safe for people to be out here again Bob let me let me let me put it a different way the police leadership who the incident commander in conjunction with everybody else that um, is on the scene, and I'm going to read it, have said law enforcement agencies, because there's more than one, have determined there's no longer an active threat or need to secure in place. And why, whereas we're not able to confirm certain things that people are want to assume, um, I think we have to abide by what they had to say, and that is that they don't believe there's still um, a need to uh, secure in place. Are, are you leaning towards a murder-suicide? can you say? can't say right now. Uh, Jeff. Yeah, just uh, back to the university's response. Um, could you, uh, President Steger, tell me what you were doing when you heard about the shooting, please? And if you have it, an estimate of how many people were on campus at the time and uh, how many people received the alerts? Well, we have some, the second part, okay, Charles. because it, the numbers are quite large, but actually I was preparing to uh, have a meeting uh, regarding the university's budget. <laughs> and, uh, but I got, I was notified within literally a couple of minutes of when this happened and, and all the systems were put in place uh, thereafter to respond in an appropriate way. Uh, 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 Jeff, actually, we, we were out of town. Um, I mean, uh, President Steger was uh, out of town on a separate trip. I was out of town. It just so happened we were in the same location. Um, and so uh, the p other people here immediately mobilized. 
Um, and so the policy group activated. Uh, President Steger and I got back just a couple of hours ago. So um, it, it, we, we, we had others uh, in place. Mark Ozowski, for example, is my number two. He was working the media relations and the VT alert system. Uh, Dr. Sherwood Wilson and Dr. Mark McNamee uh, at the policy group level. So um, we, we, had, we, were, we were out of town when this occurred uh, five hours ago, six hours ago, whatever the time was. Were you at the Cleary Act hearings? Yes. I, he, he was. I was. I was not. I was prepared to work on the budget problem, as I said. So. And an estimate of how many people were on campus? Well, today is uh, it's it's a hard day, Jeff, because it's there, there are no classes today, and so you know we've got um, 6,800 something like that employees here in Blacksburg. You know, you would have uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of students um, studying. Uh, we've got um, 9,000 9, students in living there in the dormitories. So I think you can just start running the number 9, 15, 15 you know, somewhere 16, 18 to 20,000. Because it would, it would have been smaller than normal because classes uh, were not in session. Uh, Nick from the CT, um, can you talk about what the reaction from the person that was being pulled over in the, um, you know, in, in, in the routine traffic stop and what they did upon the shooting itself? Well, I think they're being interviewed. Um, as far as the reaction, I, I really couldn't tell you that because I did not speak to them directly, so I don't know. Go ahead. Who, who, uh, oh, you're, you're holding the microphone. I thought you were ready to ask a question. Megan Gorey, WCYB. I was wondering, can you clarify, please, how many people are involved in the shooting? Do we, do we think there's more than one shooter? Um, from the, what I can tell you, I, don't, I believe it's just we have two different crime scenes, so... You know, I can't give you a specific number of people that's still being investigated at this time. So it wouldn't be fair for me to say two, three, because we don't know that. But you feel confident enough that the community is safe, so you lifted the ban? Yes. Okay, thank you. Megan, it, it really truly is a matter of confirmation. I think it's the important thing is, is that the police still need to go through what the police normally do in an investigative procedure. Yes, ma'am. Are you still looking for a shooter? I really can't give you uh, a specific answer. I think the investigators feel confident that we've located the person, but I can't give you specifics, and I don't want to confirm from that. But, you know, you can kind of read between the lines, so I won't specifically address that question, really. In the back, go, go ahead. Is it is that is is that Megan? Who who is that? No, it's Karen Kiley from Hi, Karen. WBJ. Have you guys alerted the or notified the officer's family, the Virginia Tech police officer's family? Does he have family in the immediate area that you guys ahead, uh, did notify? We have made uh, contact and notifications uh, with the officer's immediate family. Uh, part of why we're withholding identity of the officer is we still are pending notification to extended family. Bob, go ahead. Yeah, Bob with Star News. Can, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on the robbery that took place evidently? Was it last night? And give us a few more details about that. This is the one in Redford? I, yes. I don't really have specifics on that. Um, that, was, that, was, that was Radford PD that was doing that, right, Gene? Mm -hmm. Of course, the chief from Radford's here. You can ask him the question. I don't need to put you on the spot, but... I mean, were there any injuries or anything? I don't know anything about it, Bob. Could, could he elaborate on it, Chair? The case is under investigation. Any injuries at the? No injuries. No. The question was, were there any injuries? And the chief of the Radford Police Department has said that, that there were no injuries, and it continues under investigation. Go ahead, Dave. Oh no, Dawn. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. Um, is there any information that you can give about the second victim in the eye lot in the cage? Not at this time, no. Just that it was a white male that was found deceased with a gunshot. Is there anything else you need from us? Because uh, it, it, it sounds to me like we're getting to the end. I mean, it, it, again, I tell you, we're, we're going to stay here as, as long as you need, but we're not going to do one-on-ones. So 
Dawn, go, go ahead. Uh, Sergeant Carpentier, I realize you said that you can't give any information. I just want to make sure. I'm not, I understand you may not be able to give a name, but can you talk about what he was wearing, um, if he matched the description of the person that you were looking for that was heading in that direction? To be honest with you, I haven't talked to the investigators, so I couldn't tell you a clothing description other than what they told me that was a white male that was uh, deceased from a gunshot wound. D just as a, as a procedural issue, um, Bob's <clears throat> colleague, Corinne Geller, who's the Chief uh, of Public Affairs for the Virginia State Police, is on the way. Um, I will get with Corinne as soon as she gets here. Obviously, you're going to have more questions. Hopefully, we'll have more answers from the State Police. Um, I can't give you time. I don't think we're going to do another press conference at this point. Um, but Corinne and I will do our very best to try to answer your questions uh, throughout the evening uh, or tomorrow. Um, but is there, is there anything else you need from, from me, from my staff, from us, to, in terms of trying to fill out your stories? Oops, one back there. Is there? Okay, go ahead. And you are? Microphone? Can, can we get a microphone for you? Because, again, this is going out live. Nadine Grimley, WAY in Oak Hill, West Virginia. Is there an age group you can give me about the second deceased person? I, I can't because I really don't know the, the age yet. You know, and I apologize for not being able to fill in some of the blanks, but you realize this is still in the early stages of the investigation, and we're trying to provide you with much, as much information as possible. I know it's a bit frustrating for you. But uh, when other information becomes available uh, regarding the victims, then, you know, we'll, we will pass it along to you. Okay. okay. I'm Margaret Johnson with WXII. What other dots are you still trying to connect? Well, these are large crime scenes, um, and it takes several hours to put the puzzle pieces together. You also have several witnesses that have to be interviewed. You have multiple police agencies involved. Uh, we have to all get together and, uh, you know, discuss things. Uh, you have physical evidence you have to collect. You know, so it's, it's a long, drawn-out process. It doesn't happen in a few hours after the incident. This is probably going to go on for weeks. We'll try, like I said, we'll try to fill in some of the blanks sooner than that, of course. But at this point, you know, uh, even though this incident was about well, five hours ago, you know, In the words of Dr. Of Charles idea. Steger at Virginia Tech, our hearts are broken again. The first words he uttered at a news conference that is still going on at this point regarding two shootings that happened at Virginia Tech today around 12.15 this afternoon. Yeah.